Welcome to Next in Tech, an SB Global Market Intelligence podcast where the world of emerging tech lives. I'm your host, Eric Hanselman, Chief Analyst for Technology, Media, and Telecom at SP Global Market Intelligence. And today, we're going to be discussing the process of securing the experience economy. And joining me to dig into what is a pretty broad subject is Cheryl Kingstone, Paige Bartley, and Justin Lamb, uh, all of you returning guests. So welcome back to the podcast. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Eric. And it is great to have you here because we've been doing research recently into what is this intersection of how we handle data, how we manage privacy, how we deal with governance requirements in the digitized environment. And when we think about all of the different pieces that come together, it's an area where we've dealt with these generally discreetly, but the three of you are from three distinctly different disciplines. I mean, Cheryl, you're coming from the customer experience side. Paige, you're coming from the consumer data protection privacy side. And Justin, you're coming at it from the data security side. So uh, how did you all three come together and, and what does this really mean? Well, Eric, I mean, from my perspective, one of the things I noticed in my survey data this year or this past year was when we were asking organizations about what they wanted to achieve in improving their data governance and data privacy practices was that regulatory compliance was no longer the top response. It was actually that they wanted to improve their customer experience and engagement and trust. So I think that was really the first flag for me that this was really an opportunity for businesses to engage with their customers in a more trustworthy fashion and, and really improve kind of the ROI of what they were doing um, in terms of business practices and really looking at privacy and governance as an opportunity rather than just a cost center within the business. And I would say, thank God, Paige. It's like, <laughs> welcome to the crowd, you know, because you're absolutely right. And I love when we come together on all of this because, you know, customer data remains, if you've read any of my research, that core battleground, everyone, all our data is about what businesses can do about that first party data. So especially when we talk about the cookie world, and then all of a sudden, Justin reached out to me and goes, there's all this talk about first party data and cookies going away. And I'm like, yeah, right, Justin. He's like, yet they're not investing in security. And I'm like, well, they are. They say it's important, but it has to be embedded. And we got into this whole conversation. And then I'm like, okay, so the three of us have to get together because Paige looks at it from data governance and privacy. You're looking at it from security. I look at it from the line of business. And that's why it's so critically important. And so now here's this collision of all of these needs and, you know, the particular requirements. Uh, I guess the question that comes out of this is, all right, between experience, privacy, governance, security, who drives? Is this something where customer experience leads simply because the customer needs are what are primarily driving it? You know, what happens in that environment? It's not as clear cut. And so this is where, you know, we look to Justin for a lot of this because there is a gap between what the line of business knows because they are all about liberating access to data and they want it embedded in security in their applications because, you know, they're looking to reduce those friction points. But when you look at what security does, they're looking at it very differently. So Justin, you know, how are we going to solve this gap? Yeah, it is these worlds colliding. Um, I think data security teams out there are realizing how diffuse data security actually is. Uh, it used to be that uh, you know there is very much this sort of perimeter approach to data security, but that's not the way customer data flows anymore. It flows within applications. It flows within the cloud. It flows uh, just in a number of different places. So, you know, to be able to reconcile that, it's a huge part of our, our research, and um, it's something that. Uh, security leaders are actually grappling with. And Eric, to answer your question, yeah, it's not quite clear cut who is going to necessarily lead the dance, but they are going to you know, have to be dancing together uh, with their 6CX and their, and their privacy counterparts. Yeah. And I'll say that historically within the business, there's been this push and pull or this friction between your data governance, security, privacy groups within the organization in the line of business, the data teams that really want to leverage data for insight. 
And that friction can no longer exist for a successful business today. You can't have this infighting within the organization. Objectives really need to be aligned in the way that data is being used effectively to maintain competitive advantage in today's environment. Yeah, but that seems like a big ask to suddenly bring everybody together, pull out the guitars and mm. sing Kumbaya. There still are kind of conflicting priorities, right? There's a huge ask. But, you know, when we talk about added pressures, you know, Paige knows this data, but I'm just going to go through it, right? 25%, if we look at our macroeconomic trust factor, 25% of consumers are less trusting of businesses than they were a year ago. Then you add on to it that they're very concerned. Three quarters are really concerned about businesses really protecting their personal data. And the fact that we're really focusing on customer retention, it's huge. At layer on t top of that, the implosion of loyalty. Uh, I mean, Paige is the expert as it relates to some of these regulations and what we can do to build it back. Yeah, and I'll also say, looking at our consumer data, consumers change their behavior, right, when they don't trust a business. And some of the top things they do is that they withhold that first party data. And that's terrible for a business, right? You want that first party data and you want that data to be high quality. And then the second thing they do is they just go to another business. So you're losing a customer, essentially. So for the business, maintaining that trust and demonstrating that you can adequately protect and secure that data via technological means, that's essentially mission critical today. And Justin has the technological means. Is that where we're headed? I mean, it's one of them. Uh, I think this idea of where it has to not only have the means, but also the application as well. We can always be concerned about security, but if we don't have an environment or we don't have an application where that security can be applied, uh, we're not really securing that consumer data. We're not building that trust uh, with the organization. So, uh, you know, there's definitely some lessons to be learned. I mean, security teams have been working on securing data for a long time. They can bring a lot to the table, so to speak, to be able to equip and enable other lines of business to be able to incorporate more holistic data security uh, into their applications and into how they reach out to customers. So if we think about what ought to be driving this, we think about who's leading the dance, driving the bus, it's one of these situations where that need to be able to both assure customers that you're really dealing with their data responsibly and having the technology to manage it and yet still being able to leverage it for the customer experience pieces, is this really tricky balance and, and integration that has to take place? It seems like that's really the, uh, I guess, that, that triangle that's got to be balanced fairly carefully. It really does, because when you're talking about customer experience applications, a lot of line of businesses want it embedded. Right? They think that whatever Salesforce is doing or whatever Adobe is doing or wherever Oracle or SAP, whatever it is, that's where I want it in there because that's less of a problem. But we do take a look at like security versus consistency versus ease. And when we look at some of our vendor selection data and we look at what's going on with buying like individual point solutions, the number one thing they're looking at, surprisingly, even for CX, is the control over data privacy and security. When they're looking at buying more of a bundled set, that's where they're prioritizing consistent look and feel and price over security. So we have to make sure that what's going on in those bundled solutions, at least CISOs step into the plate so they understand what's going on there um, or building it themselves. That still even comes down. So the first one is around integration or added new features or easier to use no code. And only fourth is control over data governance and security. And so what we're seeing is when businesses are trying to buy customer experience technology, a lot of it is IT-led. So that's surprisingly still there. There's still IT in line of business. But if you're more digitally driven, that's really where you're going to bring in your information security management group. That's what I would say a leading indicator, something that's very unique to more digitally driven organizations as compared to your average buyer or your digitally delayed. If you look at the bigger picture within the organization and some of the challenges that businesses face in becoming more data driven as an organization, we consistently see that data security and data privacy are up towards the top of that list. 
And when you think about embedding data security, data privacy controls within those individual applications, what you end up with is a very siloed sort of ecosystem where different applications have different levels of control. And for the organization, that means less consistency of governance across that data ecosystem. So organizations today are often facing this very large challenge in how do they get that consistency across the organization for their data. Yeah, and to Paige's point, uh, you know, with data security and that idea of, I think you know, for the digitally driven uh, organizations, this idea of them actually taking back and centralizing that control across their entire CX tech stack that is something that at the end of the day could be strategically advantageous as you are, you know, today's tech stack becomes tomorrow's technical debt. If I have the control centralized, does that make it easier for me to centrally govern and possibly onboard new applications faster or offload them? Uh, you know, that's something that enterprises have to strategically consider. And data security might be one of those means to be able to facilitate that. Certainly in an adjacent related regulation, Data sovereignty within cloud operations and SaaS operations in the European theater are certainly forcing enterprises a relook. And could the silver lining actually be, hey, if we centralize control of our data, can we actually then promote or relegate different technologies simply because we have the control over the data now? And I think that's something really interesting uh, that's going to be playing out soon. Ah, uh, so you've hit on one of these aspects that that's always the hard part, you know, because Paige was talking about the silos and Cheryl, you were talking about the fact that organizations may be coming at this with a number of different tools that they're trying to bring together. And the question then that is always, what's going to be the motivation to be able to move from the capabilities you've got into something that makes more sense? Even if it does make more sense, you know, there's the switching cost, there's the effort, there's the time, there's the raw cost, but Justin, it sounds like what you're identifying is that need to be able to manage data may be the thing that is the catalyst, that is the driver that makes them move forward to get to a, a set of capabilities that will allow them to deal with data in better ways. Yes. Yes. Short answer. Yes. And potentially also address what is some of the challenging pieces in all of this is dealing with data handling itself uh, and the particulars around data sovereignty, ensuring that the right data is in the right places. Um, I guess it's also something that you then start to deal with a lot of the data lifecycle issues uh, that many consumer data privacy regulations require, you know, things like the right to be forgotten and understanding, do you know where all the data is? Can you get rid of it all when you know, the customer wants to delete the data? and those sorts of pieces. But that page gets into a lot of the regulatory requirements that businesses have to address at the same time. Yeah, regulations are not going to go away. They're only proliferating, but that's just the requirement side of the equation. And I'd like to emphasize for organizations today, this is really an opportunity to better manage and govern your data better to drive other data-oriented outcomes within the business. Because in our surveys, when we ask organizations, what are the top benefits of those data governance efforts today? The top responses are actually faster access to relevant data and higher quality of data and insight. So the top benefits of data governance are not even necessarily tied to compliance. It's accelerating those data-driven outcomes. So it's really two sides of the same coin. If you're achieving your regulatory requirements and managing your data for that, you can actually support all of those other data-driven activities. And to add on to what Paige was getting at, not only that, but if you look at what the consumer wants from these top data privacies, is it impacts loyalty. So we actually take a look at the loyalty effect. And if you are a very careful respondent, like someone that really wants to take control of those regulatory issues, it can impact your loyalty. 62% want to make sure that they're denying and have control over their personal information. They want to make sure that they understand all the information that's collecting about them. They want features like opting in and opting out of their personal privacy at a granular level. Everyone opt-ins and opt-outs, but we're not really empowering the owners of it. So businesses must really shift from acting as owners of customer data to storage of digital identities. 
So in terms of actually achieving all of this, I mean, it seems like we're now getting towards you know, integrated platforms on the CX side that can manage some of this, that have got visibility into regulatory requirements, but do they always integrate enough of the data protections from, you know, to keep the data, the security teams happy enough? I mean, if you think about how organizations are, are actually building out a lot of this, for better or worse, you know, security teams tend to be fairly reactive in terms of when they take action and what they're actually trying to achieve. How do we get beyond that? Is this something where security teams are going to come back in once the platform's in place and be shocked to find that there's not sufficient sets of controls to be able to protect it? How do we get that conversation to happen up front? Yeah, this is Justin. I think that one of the broader trends that we're seeing, especially in the digitally driven organizations, is how security teams are actually becoming decentralized themselves. Uh, if I think about things like security champions, if I think about the idea of the BISO role, uh, where that security becomes ingrained into the line of business, I think any kind of due diligence on a new technology or a new technology direction security will have a seat at the table and it'll be integral to that line of business. I think that organizational dynamic is something that is increasingly happening as the data becomes more diffuse. Can the support staff from security actually be more embedded within that database so that we make those decisions better? Uh, I definitely do think that that's something that organizations can make the investment in changing. But yet, as we get into more and larger and more complex environments, um, <laughs> We've got a, a recent cautionary tale uh, about concerns about Salesforce environments that were not well configured exposing data. We've seen this in cloud based environments, you know, S3 buckets on AWS. We seem to have gotten up to this next level of now maybe raising up the level of abstraction, but still fundamentally wrestling with issues about understanding how the protections themselves have to be implemented on the platforms. And to be clear, the issues with Salesforce are not vulnerabilities within the Salesforce platform. They're inadequate configurations of the data protections that are available on the platform. I mean, that seems like a, a real challenge to manage into and of itself. Absolutely. I think that security teams, though, especially centralized security teams, they do have history in being able to take a look at a variety of different technology tools over the years. And as computing has become more distributed, it is a different threat model. And you know, some applications are more designed to be more open-ended than others. Some have different risks based on the kinds of information that they process and what have you. But the discipline of holistically looking at how can I quantifiably reduce the risk, the reduce of exposure, the risks of loss of confidentiality or integrity, those kinds of principles are still disciplines that can be applied to the lines of business and made more integral in, you know, I think that those disciplines can even apply to the new world of, you know, more SaaS, more surfaceless kinds of architectures, more clouds, what have you. Uh, I think there's definitely uh, some knowledge that can be put in place for all those different technology directions. To add on to what Justin was saying, you know, about the digitally driven organizations, at least they know they need to do this, right? So 84% of digitally driven organizations and businesses agree that building these trusted relationships means investments in new tools and technologies to manage preferences, privacy, and security. Now that is almost a 25 point gap between companies that aren't very digitally driven. They're more delayed. They're more pragmatic. But the reality is, is that everybody has to step up to this to understand the role of people issues, the technology issues, and the metrics that are defining the overall experience. So what is the modern business to do? I and mean, Cheryl, it sounds like it's a good set of ideals for them to head towards. But what really is that path? How can they expect to deal with or to at least address a lot of these concerns? What are the things they should have in place? And I guess you're identifying there's a significant gap between those that are far ahead on the curve and those that are behind. Um, is that a gap that we can necessarily close? And, and if so, how do they go about it? It's a huge gap, right? And here's the thing is I'm not seeing enough along the buyer journey, bringing in the security personnel into the helping us, right? Where is CISO at this 
state, right? At the uh, table, table stakes there. Um, I know the buying journey of all these technologies is already fragmented and complex, but when we're talking about exactly what Paige said earlier, which is about data security, quality, and privacy are the top three issues that are top of mind. Uh, my data for CX applications support that also. Now it varies across different industries, but it's huge, right? Those are the top three concerns. So why isn't that being brought to the table more often when we're talking about influencers in the um, implementation bias journey? Because that's where Justin said the mistakes are. It's not necessarily in the platform itself, but it's in the deployment and the handling of how we're deploying these applications to our end users. So, Justin, it's security's fault that this isn't working out well. <laughs> it's all Justin's <laughs> fault. It's all Justin's fault. You know, I, I will say that um, this, this idea of trust and trust but verify uh, as a security discipline, I think, does have some implications for the customer journey, for that consumer journey, for building the trust. Uh, to that consumer, as Cheryl and Paige have mentioned, uh, this idea of and the discipline of being able to demonstrate uh, the security measures taken in place holistically, uh, I, I think that will be increasingly important, even in the customer experience itself. Um, that idea that yes, I am being trusted. If I look at other technology standards that allowed better security, better adoption of services. I think being able to take a page, for like for example, being able to use OAuth, that authentication standard, to be able to sign into various SaaS services, being able to do so securely based on a central directory, easier for the users, sign in with Google, sign in with Facebook, sign in with Microsoft, but it's also more secure if there's ever a change in the trust, if there's ever a change in being able to repudiate users or applications, that can be done so centrally. And so being able to say, great, I've demonstrated that. Now, can I also extend that to the data itself? Uh, you know, I think these are some of the logical progressions that need to happen in order for that CISO or for that security representative to be more built in to whatever that application is handling whatever data that it handles. Ah, so we need the regulations to go point that out. So in fact, this is Paige's problem. <laughs> Why is the regulatory <laughs> guidance to help us figure this out? Paige, it's all your fault. Oh, the regulations. So <laughs> <laughs> regulations have... And just, just to be clear, that, that was said in jest. I don't <laughs> want the regulatory bodies to be moving forward in that level of minute detail. Uh, but for the purposes of conversation... <laughs> well, for the purposes of conversation, regulations need to be shelf stable. They take a long time to develop and they have to last for several years, right? So... Regulations are very rarely prescriptive when it comes to technology. And I know that can be very frustrating as a business when a regulation doesn't give you an exact list of technologies to use. And in many cases, they're very ambiguous, even when it comes to defining something like personal data. So as a business, when it comes to adhering to regulations, it all comes down to consistency as a business because there will be ambiguities. There will be times where you have to make decisions and sort of stick to a game plan. But when it comes to specific technologies, you can't expect to get a list of, of exact products or technologies that you, you are expected to use from these regulations because that's just not how regulations are built. It essentially comes down to best practices and what's acceptable state of the art at that point in time. Well, so it sounds like what this really says is that it really is this integration of all three of these pieces, the overall imperatives from the regulatory piece, uh, the drivers from the security side, and hopefully the tools that come along with the platforms that are going to give us the customer experiences that, that integrate a lot of this. Uh, so really a, a full circle that's got to be in place. Absolutely. That's what drove a lot of the research of the three of us coming together. And let's not forget, okay, we're doing this primarily because also if we have a data breach, we have fines, but we also, that is the number two customer experience friction point that will drive them to not interact with you. Believe it or not, customer service is still number one, but number two is that data breach. So it's not about someone forcing you to do it. You just have to do it. Yeah, it's hanging on to customers and maintaining the business. And one other thing to add is that, you know, Eric, in this data, um, 
the sentiment, the belief that customer experience lines of business want data security, data security wants to be safeguarding that customer data. You know, this mutual interest is an opportunity. It's relatively high. If you look at previous uh, generations and previous uh, cycles, you know, data security is maybe not necessarily a must have for building CX. But as the world has changed, as you know, more organizations and just that 74% or three out of four consumers that we've studied are wary of and concerned about their privacy online, um, you know, there's a groundswell here of, of mutual interest. And I think that's an opportunity for organizations to harness and leverage. No one has to really be sold on data security. It's now the principle of how are we going to go apply it and work together to achieve it. And hopefully that driver is what brings the security pieces to the table with the discussions around the regulatory aspects uh, and the customer facing systems at the same time. Hopefully that moves the needle and catalyzes some action against a, what is, I think, a, a large and complex environment, but, but hopefully one that has some, some more positive outcomes. All right, well, thanks to all three of you. These are great perspectives, and I guess we can... Uh, Hope that a lot of this starts to resonate uh, with both our audiences and the industry as they start to move this forward. So thanks for being on the podcast. Eric, it's been great. Thanks. Thank you, Eric, for inviting us. Eric, Cheryl, Paige, it's always a great conversation. Always great to be with you. And that is it for this episode of Next in Tech. Thanks to our audience for staying with us. And thanks to our production team, including Carolyn Wright, Ethan Zimmon, and Syed Waji Abbas on the marketing and events teams at our studio lead, Kyle Canyalosi, and our teams, Derek Brown and Darren Rose. I hope you'll join us for our next episode where we'll be talking about digital transformation in manufacturing. I hope you'll join us then because there is always something next in tech.